Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Kathy here. Look what I've got in my hands. And you know what that means. It's kale chip time. And if you look over there in that container, you'll see that we've started to pick the plums from the tree as well. So I'll be making some stuff with the plums in the coming days and I'll show you what I do with those. But at the moment, I've got an abundance of kale that needs to be picked and I'll show you what I do with that. Now the kale that I've planted this season is the Cavalonero, which is the black cabbage Tuscan kale. And I've got two bushes and I just wanted to show you the difference between the two bushes that I've got. One of them has these little leaves and they're kind of rolled back you can see and none of the insects have really got into those and done any damage but the other bush I've got is has got a more open flap leaf and as you can see they've been nibbled to pieces so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to waste them because with the kale chips you put oil and salt and seasoning on them so you don't actually taste that real bitterness of them. Now these older leaves here that are bigger and a bit more weathered, I probably wouldn't use them to put in a salad. I would cut them up finer and use them in cooking, in broths and stew. But if I was gonna have a nice salad, what I would do is I would use these smaller ones because they look much nicer for presentation. and they probably be a bit sweeter too. But one of the tips with kale is if you are using it raw in a salad, what you do is you cut it up into your pieces or break it up into your pieces and you just massage it gently. So you rub it between your hands like as if you were massaging something and it actually softens it up and makes it a lot more easily digestible. So that's a little tip that I can give you there. And now I'm going to show you what I do to make the kale chips. And an easy way, rather than having to cut all this up, is you just start off the end and you pull the leaf up and then you're left with the rib. Now, these ribs are really good. You can actually fry them, cut them up small and saute them and they're delicious or put them into juice or put them into your stock bag in the freezer or in your compost. So that's another way to reduce your waste. So I'm going to strip all these first and then I'm going to give them a rinse. I just find it a little bit easier to make sure that everything's had a proper rinse and there's no bugs on them by stripping it first and then rinsing it. It's so easy. Once you've worked out how to do it this way, you won't bother sitting there cutting it anymore. And I think that puts a lot of people off from doing it, is thinking of all the hand chopping. Whereas if you just do it like that, so much easier. But I'm just gonna go through all of these and strip them all down and then give them a wash. There's the rinse kale in the bowl. You can see that I've just given it a, a light shake. I haven't worried about drying it off. That's no problem at all. Then here I've got some of my spring onion salt, some savory yeast flakes and some oil there. Just some good olive oil, which I'm gonna put on there and mix all together and then lay on a baking sheet and bake in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're nice and crispy. They're really delicious. If you're not a fan of kale, you really can't think of any way that you'd like to eat it. I suggest that you try this. And if you don't like the dark 
Tuscan kale like this, you could always use a curly kale. Some of those are a bit milder in flavour and they might be more to your liking. So first of all, I just pour on some olive oil. You can use any vegetable oil, almond oil, coconut oil, whatever you like. I just like to give it a good coating in that. And then I put on some salt. You can use any type of salt. I just use that spring onion salt or the veggie salt that I use, which I'll put a link to show you how I make that in the oven or the dehydrator. And then this is just some savoury yeast flakes, which I put on. You could put chilli flakes, anything like that. Put on as little or as much as you like. I tend to put quite a bit of that on because I, I really like the look of it on the finished chip. And then you just work that all through with your hands so that each piece is coated. Now some of these pieces I've left quite large, that's fine because they do break up when they're crunchy really easy. So if you want to sit there and make small pieces, you can do that or you can just leave them whatever size they pull off the leaf. And some of these pieces will probably get more coating on than others, but that's Then I just lay these out on the baking sheet. You don't have to be too fussy about it. Some people place them all out singly. I just fill up the sheet as much as I can. And if you think that you might need a bit more flavoring, then you can actually just put a little bit more on over the top like that. And I'm going to put those into the oven and bake them until they're crispy. So I would put them in at about 150 Celsius into the oven, probably for about 15 to 20 minutes. But you do need to watch them because they can burn really easily. There go the second ones in the oven, so we'll come back and look at those in about 20 minutes. And I've just taken them out of the oven, and you can see they shrink up quite a bit, and they turn out really nice and crispy, and beautiful and tasty, and you can see those big pieces just break up really easy. So to store them, just pop them in an airtight container, and they'll last for a few days, but they're beautiful eaten just freshly cooked and crunchy.